thank you uh, so much uh, uh, for being here today. We have a lot of members of the, can everyone hear okay? My mic okay? Um, of the HVAC and, and air duct cleaning uh, community. I'm here for, uh, for a very important announcement, which is now going to be Senate Bill 338. And uh, what we, uh, just to give a little format, <coughs> um, we have uh, John Schulte here from the National Air Duct Cleaners Association. We have Mark Swepson, the CEO of Alice Butler. And after I describe what the bill's about, they're going to tell you a little bit about their personal testimonials in addressing uh, the problems that the bill seeks to address. Um, you know, the, the simple um, place to start, beginning of last year, I was watching TV, and it was quite frankly, a Chris Hansen Dateline episode, and uh, the victim uh, on the episode was from Ohio, and they were talking about air duct cleaning, and I kind of took a double take, um, and they were talking about bait and switch and fraudulent practices um, that, that exist, albeit we have many, many who do it the right way and are honest, uh, but those who, who infiltrate the system, perhaps from out of state or otherwise, want to take advantage of people. So we started working with staff to address the problem, get information, and that's where our national air duct cleaners um, were help us uh, get started along with our local uh, uh, community members. Uh, and oftentimes you'll see, if you ever get the Valpac coupons on in the mail, uh, you'll see coupons representing that they're going to do work for a dollar an air event or twenty dollars an event. That in and of itself uh, isn't <clears throat> fraudulent or anything wrong with it. But what happens is, if what happens is when you go to the door, are they really going to charge you twenty dollars of that? Um, oftentimes, that's a big switch, um, and the bill gets much higher. Um, they also will oftentimes use scare tactics, and we'll get to that when I address certain components of the bill. Um, last year, the Better Business Bureau report had fifty-two thousand inquiries about air duct cleaners, and as this investigator report on NBC showed these unscrupular, unscrupulous contractors oftentimes won't clean the systems or they'll overbill their customers or make misrepresentations in order to secure their business. So this legislation was created, number one, to protect consumers, and two, to protect the air duct cleaners um, that are operating legitimately and honestly. Um, so that's the intent of the bill, is to focus on those two areas. The components of the bill are as follows. I broke it, I've broken it down into eight sections. First, it's going to require registration of air conveyance system cleaning servicers. Um, they're going to register with the Department of Commerce. Um, so no person is going to be able to operate in this fashion without first registering. Um, I should note that uh, if there's any question of whether we're creating a barrier to entry in the market, people are doing it legitimately. To, to be an air uh, cleaner, you have to go out and incur a lot of expense and have specialized equipment. This isn't something that your neighbor can just go out and do. Um, so we're making sure, I mean, the people that are registering are going to be the ones um, that are going to have already gone through the time and expense um, to learn their, learn their trade. Second thing is there are going to be prohibitions um, against air conveyance system cleaning services. Um, first, they will not be able to misrepresent any dangerous substance in the vent. What we have, and you'll see some undercover videos with, with Chris Hansen and Tom Susie from ABC locally has done some of these. They'll say, oh, look, I found a dangerous substance in your vent, and this is banned by the EPA, or the EPA says this is, this is harmful. Oftentimes, the substance in the vents do not pose uh, an immediate harm, or sometimes harm at all. It's more about getting the dust out for allergy reasons. Um, and even go so far as saying you need to leave your house, or I can go ahead and, and clean it now, but since we have this dangerous substance, it's going to cost you a lot more. So that's the intent that we're, that's what we're getting at with that first part of the bill. Misrepresenting dangerous substance in the vent. They can't misrepresent a sponsorship or affiliation. They can't claim they're a, you know, a certified air duct cleaner if they aren't. Um, they can't misrepresent the benefits of air conveyance system cleaning. They cannot knowingly make a false report to a consumer in their solicitation. Um, and if they, uh, they can't fail to provide registration information. If the consumer wants a registration information, they're going to have to provide their new registration number, which we'll get to that part of the bill soon. The third part of the bill, the Consumer Sales Practices Act will apply. Um, the AG will have the authority uh, to prosecute, which Mike DeWine, by the way, is in support of this bill. Fortunately, he was not able to make it here today. The fourth component of the bill will authorize the director of Ohio Department of Commerce to adopt rules so that he 
he or she can create registration standards, um, including financial responsibility and work experience requirements. Um, and also a system so that consumers can identify and verify an air conveyance system cleaning servicers registration. Um, and another component of our bill will require them to put their registration number on all of their advertisements and all of their vehicles. So if they were to drive up to your house, for example, you could look out the van, see the number, and have a phone number to call. Department of Commerce will be in charge of creating that system. Um, for the registration requirements, there will be an application, there will be a fee, there will be a disclosure statement, among, amongst which the disclosure statement they will have to provide information if they were ever convicted or pled guilty to a crime. Um, depending on the level of the crime, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to waive their license. If the director has deemed them to be rehabilitated, um, then they can still operate. So what we're trying to get at here are more serious crimes or laws of misrepresentation that we think may impact their ability or shows that they lack veracity. Uh, number six, um, this part of the bill, um, is, shows that the bill is going to apply to anyone engaging in any of these activities within the state of Ohio, irrespective of where you live. So we'll have jurisdiction if you're trying to do, do this work in Ohio, and we're especially trying to get people out of state that may come in, operate fraudulently, and then leave. Number seven, every registered servicer must prominently display the registration number in their place of business, on all advertisements, business documents, contracts, and any correspondence with consumers. So if they want to send out the Valtac coupon, they're doing it at $19 or not, that's fine. You've got to put your number on there. You have to be registered, put your number on there. That's going to quickly, we hope, weed out the people that aren't registered, because if they don't have a number, we can immediately, an action can be brought against them immediately for not registering. Also, they'll have to put, as I said, or stated earlier on their vehicles. You pull, they pull up to the house, you can look out, you can get the number, and know right away who to call to find out if they're legitimate. And number eight, the eighth item, is that no, uh, no registered air conveyance system cleaning servicer shall perform any of these services unless that person enters into a written contract with the consumer. Um, and going further, those are the required, that's what the eight, I'd say, main components of the bill. We didn't add penalty provisions into the bill because the Consumer Sales Practices Act currently applies. And what that translates into is the Attorney General uh, will be able to investigate these cases um, and we'll have remedies if the contractor is found in violation of the law. Um, AG could seek an injunction against the fraudulent activity. Um, a fine could be imposed up to $5,000 a day um, if they are in violation of the injunction after it's ordered. Also allows for class action. Um, if you have one fraudulent contractor that's built, you know, numerous individuals, <clears throat> you're also going to have a private right of action, aside from the Attorney General in case a citizen wants to bring their own action. Um, so that's a good overview of the bill. What we'll do is we'll move on to our guest here today, and then at the end, if we have questions, we'll all be back up at the podium.